and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Today, we are coding our infrastructure as code with TypeScript and also our Lambda functions with TypeScript. This is something you ask me many times since I'm working with CDK. I always write the infrastructure as code with TypeScript and you ask me, can we do the same but for our Lambda function code? And yes, we can. <laughs> if you're building your infrastructure with TypeScript, it's quite normal that you also want to build your Lambda functions with it because why to use multiple languages? Also, because when you run the initialization of your application of the boilerplate of a CDK application, like a CDK init uh, dash dash language TypeScript, the boilerplate has everything denying JavaScript. So whenever you need to, I don't know, put up a JavaScript pro, uh, file in GitHub or run some tests or things like that, the JavaScript is kind of blocked. So you need to go and basically exclude JavaScript from all these places. And it's kind of annoying because TypeScript is an amazing language. So what is the problem? Why we have not written the uh, files, the Lambda functions with TypeScript already? Well, the thing is this, uh, Node.js doesn't support natively TypeScript. So what you need to do is you write the Lambda functions in TypeScript, and then you have a mechanism to compile the TypeScript into JavaScript, basically transcribing it, and that will be deployed into um, Lambda, the Lambda service. So I will show you in the demo how to do this, but basically what we will do is uh, use a construct that CDK provides called Node.js function that allows you to, uh, when you synthesize the whole, uh, this component, it will transcribe your TypeScript to JavaScript, and then you can deploy that package. So this is just a construct from the CDK library. So it's something you can use. I will leave all the links in the description box so you can check them out. And Basically, you will see how simple it is to get this done. So before going to the code, I show you the demo and all those things that you like. Give it a like, subscribe and, you know, all these things that you do like. And let me know what concerns you have with CDK, with Lambda functions and things like that. Because this video particularly and many other videos I have been doing around CDK are coming from questions that you put in the comments. And then it's like, mm, this question has been repeated like 20 million times. I need to make a video. So leave your questions. Even if you think like, well, maybe she will never care about it. Yes, I read all your questions and I have a backlog with million ideas. So questions are important. So let's go to the code and see it in action. So the project I will show you is just the basic CDK in it that dash language equals TypeScript boilerplate. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the code that it's in the previous uh, video that I did from CDK, the Lambda function URL. So uh, no, no rocket science here. <laughs> this is how I basically got started here because you know, I'm very lazy to move my demo. So I try to, to keep it there. So in the TypeScript stack, if you go to that uh, video, the Lambda function URL, you can get the code and basically paste it here. And the link of this video, it's in the description box. If you don't know, you want to see how I build it. It's the CDK part. Then uh, there you will find a line mod table. You will find a function with a function URL. And the difference between that project and this one is that that one was the function and this one is a Node.js function. So I just need to import that. And then we basically need to have that code part modified by an entry. So now the entry is basically where the TypeScript file is. And that's kind of it. The rest is exactly the same of what we have before. We can do more extensions in the Node.js function, but we will get there later. So then we can go to the code in our function. I have the function TypeScript there. And what this function does is that's exactly what the uh, that Lambda function URL does. That is my simple greeter project that it gives you an URL. And if you do get and a name, it tells you if that person was already in the database or not. And it tells you if it's uh, when it was created or when it was saved to the database. If you do a post, then basically it tells, uh, it saves it in the database. So it's playing a little bit with Dynamo. What I did here is, uh, first of all, I need to install this uh, library that is the S 
ES build and this is the uh, tool that will help us to do the transpile and the whole building. So this is important to have. So the whole uh, deployment package can be created. And because of that, uh, you can do a lot of interesting things with this Lambda, but I will talk about that later. Then we need to install the types at Erolias Lambda, and this will bring some interesting types for the inputs and outputs of our Lambda functions that we can work with. So that's another import that we need. I already installed everything, so I'm not running those commands, but yeah, have in mind that you need them. And then we can go to the function and you can see here uh, not much uh, change from the normal uh, code. JavaScript and TypeScript are kind of cussings, one with types, one without, but yeah. So I have not really done a lot of change. But one change here is that I have a handler type in the handler. And this is coming from the types at uh, AWS Lambda that I just installed. And here, if you go to handler, you can see that there is multiple handlers for all kind of different um, AWS components that can trigger the Lambda function. In my case, because this is a Lambda function URL that is triggering the function, it doesn't appear in the list, so I'm just grabbing a generic one. But if you're using API Gateway, S3, you know, kinesis or things that are, have been there for a while, you will find them in this list and you can use them. But for me, I just use the basic handler. Then I import the DynamoDB package from the AWS SDK and I use the DynamoDB client. For environmental variables, they work exactly the same like with normal JavaScript. So I just grab the environmental variable with the table name and then we can start uh, working. Nothing really changed in the code. There is an if, if it's get, let's get the hello. If it's a save a post, then we save it. And if not, then we don't know anything. So this code, you have seen it in multiple videos. It's just saving an item and getting it from the database. No rocket science. We just need to tune a little bit the params creation to put the types there. And you might need to do typing here and there, but that's kind of the biggest change. So after we, complete our code, what we need to do, and this is very important, is to run CDK synth. This will build, uh, this will transpile our um, TypeScript into JavaScript, and you will be able to see uh, the outputs of this uh, operation in your CDK out. This is not something you need to put in your GitHub repo. It's part of your build process, CDK synth. But if you are using JavaScript, you sometimes don't need this step. But if you're using TypeScript, as the code for your Lambda functions, you need to compile um, your, your code. So open that and in the index.js, you will see the code that uh, has been created from your TypeScript. It kind of looks the same, but it's a little bit uh, busier. So yeah, that's the code that um, ESBuild has created for you. Now you are basically ready to deploy and this is the normal CDK deploy. It will grab what is in the CDK out and put it in the cloud and voila, you are ready to go. So I will fast forward this part until uh, we're kind of ready. So when we finish, we get the uh, Lambda function URL and we use it in our uh, Thunder client. If you want to know what Thunder client is, I leave you my video with extensions and I get the name Marcia. Nobody was greeted with my name, how I there? And I save that name in the database, then I create it again. And then basically I can see that my name was created and then I have Juan and well, all you know, basic deal. And then we can check the logs and the logs I'm using serverless console. Again, check that video with the plugins for more information, describe in the description box. And uh, yeah, you can see everything is good, yeah. So if you want to see uh, more about this and, and how uh, this construct work, because the Node.js function is what it does a lot of things, you can go and check the documentation for this construct. I will leave it in the description below, but basically it looks something like this. And here you can find more information about the optimizations you can do with these things. For example, you can remove uh, or add things from your build package, like removing layers or uh, AWS SDK from your bundle. So it's more smaller. You can minify the bundle. So you are saving um, kind of some <laughs> lines of code and everything will make the bundle smaller. Uh, you can do some replacement of variables on the, on the fly. You can 
change the log levels. You can do quite a lot of interesting things. So if you're interested in optimizing your Lambda function, check what you can do with this Node.js function uh, construct because there is quite a lot of things. So that's the video for me today. I hope you like it. I think this is quite an interesting thing. Um, yeah, and let me know if this is something that you're interested in. Would you like to see the same thing on how to do it with Sam? If so, leave it in the comments and I see you in another episode of Uwa. Ciao, ciao!